All right, hey, it's uh, it's good to see everybody. I know it's been a little while since I've done a video, so what I thought I would do is show you what I've been doing on the Honey Badger Highlander and give you some updates on some of the cool things that are happening and uh, maybe get you pumped for your build and show you what you can do inside a small garage like mine. Um, you don't need a huge hanger, and <clears throat> I think that's what my build has really turned into and, and, and I hope motivates some people who are thinking, gosh, I gotta have a hanger, I gotta have all this stuff, no. You can build a sweet Highlander um, inside your own little garage. I mean, you look around. My garage is not very big. This is my detached garage that I actually built years ago just to simply put stuff in for the yard. So uh, I want to take and show you. So I'm just going to kind of flip the camera around and uh, show you what we've got and what we've been building. Okay, so here it is. I want to show you. I have... My entire tail section is on. It will not be removed. Um, there is everything connected. Trim tab is on. And uh, so it is all ready to go. If we come over here, take a look at this side. One, one thing I'd like you to notice, VGs are all on. They're also on the, they're on the underside down here. So I've got VGs down here that are underneath. And uh, you know, my window is on. That looks pretty cool. Turned out, I think that turned out pretty good. What I ended up doing was I put a little, oops, I put a little split right here so that I could come around the tubes so this cutout worked. And you'll notice you get full clearance, you know, no issues, full throw, um, which is awesome. Plus, you can see down in there and you can actually see the elevator horn and the connection. So my tail is on um, and it is all buttoned up and uh, coming forward. So I'm gonna show you this. So I've got my floor panels and my panels out. So you'll actually see it from the previous video where I painted my black on from the stuff from Craig Tim, which is so cool. I didn't really paint down inside here simply because that's all gonna be covered with the floorboard. But what I wanna show you is there there are my comm. There's my comms radio. There's my remote transponder. Um, it is all connected. Um, the harness is all on. And as you follow it up, you can see that that harness goes all the way up on the inside there. So, so it's running right up through here. And that harness is all 100% connected. So then we're going to kind of come up and around here and I'll show you you know, I've got one of the seats in just to kind of give you a good feel, but once again, there it is. There is my panel. It is in. I'm super stoked. Power this bad boy up. And, dude, check that out. That's pretty awesome, though. So there, there is my 10 and a half inch iPad. It's got the wind speeds going right now. That is the very, very cool iPad insert that Craig Tim sells. And you can check him out on the Highlander Superstole group. But I'm telling you what, that insert is so cool. I'll show you the backside of it. But it was, a, it was very easy. My panel, um, just so you know, I cut out by hand. I did not do, I didn't do a CAD works on it. I just measured it as best I could. And I, I think really what I'm trying to do is show you that without spending crazy money, having CNC machines, uh, taking your stuff in to have everything laser cut, you can actually do, um, you can actually do it and make it look really good. So um, this cutout right here is actually for my um, Vigilus. You know, obviously it's the three and something hole and the Vigilus will be squared up, so should look really nice. I did throw in a winter, um, turn coordinator i just simply wanted to have um, a larger bubble so that when you're you want to really make sure you're coordinated um you know you're you're good to go all my buttons are in hope you like the look of that that uh very cool carbon fiber look so what what that is is actually that's actually a dip so there's a local company here in utah called black ice coatings lee meekum they do guns, they do everything, but I took that in and had them dip it and clear coat it, sand it, and then hit it with a matte clear coat. And then um, I actually had my, uh, my letter engraving lasered in at McGee's Trophy here in Utah. So 
think about that. You've probably got local businesses that can do that for you. So there's the panel, and I'm super stoked about it. Looks way good. It's in. Um, got to show you this. This is where it gets really exciting. So I'm still in the process of, of kind of mixing, weaving, and bobbing, and trying to get everything in. But um, there's... There's my avionics. Stuff's still kind of laid in here. So, you know, I'm going to go through, do a final cleanup and, and zip tie down and, and uh, you know, getting everything put together. But, you know, there is, there's my avionics right there. It's kind of an upper view. So, obviously, i got an outside air temperature. I've got to figure out where I'm going to put. And we'll do some additional tidying and cleaning up of things, you know, and, and zip tying. But it's all just kind of roughly zip tied in there and try to make it fit. So there's the harness. That's the backside of that really cool iPad insert. He does the mini, does the 10 and a half, um, and you install this little 40 millimeter fan. It connects up to the vertical power, so you've got cooling for the back of your iPad. But that is in and going. So very, very cool. I've got another really cool thing that I'm gonna try on mine, and I don't know, somebody, if you've got input, please let me know. So here's my pedo and AOA. And you know, a lot of people bring them in, they come through your tube and they make a, they'll make a hard turn right here and they'll bring it up and then down. Instead of doing that, what I've done is I'm running mine, I'm gonna run mine right through the top here. And what you can't see is it's going up right in the top here. So the tube will, you know, your spar is gonna come on, connect right there. And then what I've done is behind here, I've made some connection points, a circular ring that the tubes go through. So they're actually sucked up super tight against this back wall here. They're not in, not even close to any of the cables that will go through. And there's no way for them to become entangled in any way, shape or form because they're pulled up against the back. And then it makes a gentler turn there and it'll come. And then as you can see, they're kind of right there. They're actually kind of roughed in. They'll go right down through that slot right there. And then I will bring them around and they'll plug right back here, um, you know, into the uh, GSU. And so that should be pretty cool. Um, and so, you know, I had my, I had my um, turtle deck off. I made sure that how those fit inside there, there's no way they're gonna be in any way with cables, there's no, um, no bumping into anything. So pretty cool because it doesn't make such a sharp turn when you come around, you know, and here they are. And so then here's the tubes. They're gonna go ahead and they'll connect in. And you can see how I've still got a few things that are gonna obviously be run and, you know, they'll come down through there. So next question, you're probably saying, okay, well then you've cut those. How are you connecting them? And I'll just quickly show you over here. So, I've got my, I've got quick connectors right here that I'm going to be using. And I went and tested them and uh, connected them up, vacuum tested them, pressure tested them. They work phenomenal. So, that will allow me um, just to put the wing on, quick connect, and these will actually then tuck up inside the wing, up inside the tube. So, um, I'm going to give that a go, you know, if it's a screw up that's gonna suck. But I don't think it is, I think it's gonna work out well. Um, so that'll be kind of cool. So now, um, where I'm at, uh, my goal is to have, you know, all of my, you know, I'm, I'm basically, I've got that one platform in right there. I've got everything else in, throttle is in, temporarily fit, battery is in, and so, my goal for the next week is to make sure that from the firewall back, I have everything in and set up and ready to go. I'm just getting ready to, um, to download the final file for the vertical power um, and then all my pin instructions in there. But here's what's really cool. So I installed the, um, I did the, the, this battery backup right here, which was recommended. Um, let me see, I'll show you. So it's the, it's the integrated IBBU battery backup TCU right here. Um, and so it's all connected. So once I got it all connected, I discovered this. I was sitting in my seat, play flying and enjoying myself. And I thought, oh, I'll just push my battery 
master battery button. And lo and behold, it powered up my, it works, man, which is so cool because nothing else is really turned on. So here comes my uh, Garmin G3X Touch. It's all coming up and it's firing up off that battery backup, which is so cool to see because I haven't even hooked anything else up. You know, it's all, you're going to see some errors because nothing else is connected yet or it's all connected, but it just hasn't, uh, doesn't have additional power for it. But it goes to show you that that harness works and it's all connected. So yeah, I'm pretty pumped about that. Push to talks are all in. Um, I will show you, I'm doing something here. I've, I've taken this material and instead of just using the triangle piece that goes down here, um, I'm doing a full piece and I'll show you this in another video that is going to run that width across the top right there and the bottom in that same uh, sheet of aluminum, but covered up in that same dip so that when I install my um, fuel gauge, that's what that cutout is. And then I've got, you know, a couple of more things that I'm installing right there. They're on that nice piece of aluminum, um, clear coated with that carbon fiber gold look, which I think just finishes it out, kind of trims it out really nice. But that is the Honey Badger in its in its next phase, when you consider now everything from the tail forward is done. I'm right at the kind of the final phases of figuring out my harness. It does kind of look messy, but it will be clean when it's all finished. <clears throat> I want to have the firewall back done and completed here within the next week. And then I'm really just waiting for my engine from, you know, from the team at uh, Edge Performance. And once I get that, I've got the... I've got my mount, engine mounts ready to go. And we'll start installing the engine and then we'll start really going fast with the final install. So um, that is what's happening. Man, I hope you guys like it. If you see anything, I'm, I'm always open to your feedback. Um, I wanna hear from you if, if you think there's something I've missed or a mistake that's been made, better catch it now, right? Um, but hey, everything seems to be working and I love the way it's coming out. And again, you know, I don't have any CNC machinery. I don't have anything so like that. I mean, I've got I've got small stuff. I have like a small Harbor Freight sheet metal bender. You know, that's that's what I've got. I've got a bender like that, and then I've got your basic, you know, cutting tools and you know your wiring tools here that you're using to wire with. And and uh, you know, I'll show you. I've got my, you know, there's my there's my cutting tools. So. You don't, I just don't think, I think I want people to know that you can build a really sweet, sweet airplane. At least I think it's, mine's coming together nice. By going slow, being careful, and utilizing low-cost tools, um, you, can, you can really do some neat stuff without having to go crazy um, and, and do C and seed stuff. Now, it would be way cool if I had that, and if I had the financial resources to... To do that, then I would probably be CNC and a lot of cool stuff, but I don't. So this is a, a shop built Highlander. I think it's turning out really, really nice. And, and I'm hoping that it inspires a few people to, to not be afraid to dive into your own shop, use the tools you have, ask a lot of questions like I have of great people um, that help. Well, that'll give you ideas. And on, um, you know, how to do stuff like this, that, you know, that door, um, which we've talked about in the past from uh, Chris Whalen. What a sweet idea. That, that made things way cool for my airplane. And I built that on my little bender, you know, all the, everything was just done with those little power tools, cutting, Dremels, grinding, hand sanding. Um, it takes a lot more time. Like I said, you know, I cut out my iPad opening there for um, Craig Tim's iPad insert by hand with a hand file, masking tape, and a round file to make the corners perfect. And, and by the time I got it done, you, it takes an hour or two or three to do it, um, but you can make it so it's absolutely perfect and it just fits in like a glove. And that's how I cut out my Garmin cutout and everything else. And you're gonna make a few mistakes. I mean, things will not be as They'll be pretty close, but they're not going to be as though it came out of a laser cutter. But at the end of the day, um, it's pretty awesome to have done it all by hand. So that's it. 
I am hoping that you guys like that and you're enjoying it. So I got another update coming, more cool stuff, but love to hear from you and hope you like what's going on.